Uh, G'day guys, welcome back to Historical Stitching. Today we're talking about the back stitch. the back stitch is lots of fun lots of easy to do uh, and it's really great it's a very historically accurate stitch used in garment construction for thousands of years alrighty so let's take a quick look now today I'm using a piece of this is just an off cut of uh, coarse linen I have a piece of linen thread with me I'm using a needle from a company called make your own medieval um, these guys are in Queensland Australia they're uh, a lot of fun to work with they really know their stuff they're very passionate about what they do uh, and they're really uh, enthusiastic to pass on their knowledge, I guess. Um, so I really recommend uh, hitting them up. They do all kinds of different um, historical sort of gear and stuff, and they're, uh, they're just a really easy company to work with. All right, so um, backstitch. Now, it's going to depend upon the fabric you're working with. So if you're working with a silk or a fine linen, then your stitch length would typically be shorter. If you're working on coarse linen, I would say it's probably gonna be like a five to seven millimeter long stitch length. And if you're working with wool, then it might be maybe um, half an inch or roughly what, 12 millimeters long or so. So, um, I start my back stitch which is with a very simple, uh, I have a, a very simple knot at the end of my, my thread and I just go through. Now the main thing here is consistency. So now I, I know there are some slight variations, different people do this slightly differently, that's okay. Um, it's just a little bit of a question of well, what's going to work for you. Now if you're in medieval reenactment or you're looking to get into medieval reenactment, I suggest getting in touch with your, um, your organization and seeking a copy of their authenticity guide. Now they should have one of these. If they don't, um, I would suggest recommending they get one. Um, and what that is, is a document which should outline um, the kind of sewing techniques and fabrics and styles of garment that, the, um, that this particular organization will accept. So often what happens is People get into medieval reenactment, let's face it, we've all done it, right? I certainly have. And what happens is you um, you get into medieval reenactment and you go and buy lots of stuff, belts, pouches, footwear, headwear, weapons, who knows what. And it's, it's this is not a cheap hobby, by the way. <laughs> not a cheap hobby at all. And then before you, you know it, you've bought a whole lot of stuff that doesn't actually apply to the era that historically you're trying to reenact. So um, it's, it's really important to have one of these guides. I've heard of people, you know, buying, for instance, a really nice fabric from a fabric store and making a, um, you know, a wonderful garment that actually looks really good, but they've used um, a, 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 a construction method, which this particular organization doesn't like or they've used a fabric um, that this particular organization doesn't like and before you know it, um, you know, they've, they've realized they've gone and wasted a whole lot of money, time and effort um, producing something that they're not, now not allowed to wear. Um, it can be really disheartening for people, it can be really upsetting and although I know that there are some people out there who think it's a bit funny, it's really not. Um, so. If, you know, I, I love pouring my heart and soul into my um, uh, my work and my the craft that I produce, the wooden boxes, the leather goods, the fabric goods, the clothing and costuming and so on. And so, um, uh, you know, I, I really, I really think it's a, a representation of my skill and my passion and my 
beliefs and so on so alrighty guys thank you so much for watching please like subscribe and share I'll catch you in my next video